One time I was a shift commander in the Eastern District, and I'm telling my guys, stop pulling over old white ladies, stop pulling over that young cute girl, stop. We focus on who commits the crimes. That makes sense. Until you complete the cycle and realize that you started doing that because of institutionalized racism in your organization. And so when you are f jacking up those guys in the corner and you do find that dime bag, so you send him to jail. Now he can't go to work the next day, so he loses his job. And then he can't make it to court, so he gets his license suspended. And then he's driving, and then you are focusing on those 16 to 24 year black males. So now you're more likely to pull them over. Now you pull him over. Now he has a suspended license. Now he gets his license revoked. And now he can't get to the job legally. And you just, and now, now he's dealt, it's left with selling drugs on the corner. So you, we're, we're creating it. We have to step back and realize what the facts are and what we're doing. It's happening far too often here in America. A legal traffic stop by law enforcement that turns into an argument, a discourse, words being said, sometimes not much being said at all. And someone is removed from the scene either by paramedics or the coroner's office. It has brought cops across the nation to a point where they believe that more than at any other time, they have a target on their back for simply doing their job, placed there by brazen criminals who believe they can shoot at any time and get away with it. It has also brought citizens across the nation, mostly African Americans, believing they're the ones with the target on their foreheads. And simply because they're black, they are going to be rounded up and shot without warning, without reason, with anger, with real hard intent. It's got to stop. It has to stop. But we need to understand from the ground level what is driving this societal sickness. Line up. You can call in with your comments. 1-877-NEWSMAX. 1-877-639-7629. Our guest has more than 30 years of law enforcement experience. He understands what happens on the street and in the prison system. And he now dedicates himself to teaching both sides of these encounters how to stop the killing. His new book has a simple and compelling title, Surviving the Stop, Change the Atmosphere, Change the Outcome. Welcome Bobby Kimbrough Jr. to The Hard Line. Bobby, thanks so much for joining us. And as I said, this has got to stop. We have got to start having some really good, sincere conversation. And a lot of this goes back to the stop in Minneapolis of Philando Castile saying his lawyer for the cop says race didn't play any part in this deadly force whatsoever. People are looking at this going, well, wait a minute, would this have happened if he was white, according to what the governor said? Well, let's just put this all into context here. The soundbite we heard talked about from a police officer saying the cops are creating this issue. Do you believe in that? Well, first of all, let me uh, say thank you for having me. Um, what I think is happening is as one thing that uh, the person was saying is that it's a systematic uh, issue that we have out here. Uh, I think that the systematic approach that we're having, whether it's racism within the police departments, whether it's in corporate America, whether it's in our educational system, the main thing is we've got to come together and have real conversation, realize that we all bear a sense of biasness. We all have a sense of preference. And the problem is that we need to have real conversation. We've become so politically correct that we're about to be incorrect. Uh, having been an officer, having uh, served on the patrol car, in a patrol car, uh, whether it be on the local, state, and federal level, I understand what the officer feels. But at the same time, as an African-American, I've been stopped many a times unjust. So I get both sides of the coin. But the solution is this. It's not the separation. It's, it's we've got to come together and fix this problem from a holistic approach. We've got to have real dialogue. So then where do we start? Because you've just brought up two sides. The cops, institutional racism, who simply do stop people because they're black. And the cops who have told me that it's the fault of the African-American community, not them, because that's where the crime is festering. So where do we start the conversation? Well, I think we start the conversation as early as in our middle schools, our elementary schools, because what people are responding to is what they see. You and I could see the same event. We could see the same traffic stop, the same television program, and both of us walk away with two different perspectives. And your perspective is based on your experience, your exposure, and from that you draw on that. And the truth of the matter, if you think about it, a lot of officers that serve in community only go to that community to work. They don't get their hair cut, they don't, they don't buy groceries there, they go to that community to serve. So all that they know about that community is basically from working there and what they see from the media. Is it simply though, and I hear what you're saying about community cops. When I was a kid, that's what happened in New York City. A lot of the cops lived in the communities, but still we're dealing with, we have cops who live two, three counties behind. There are law enforcement agencies who say, we can't find enough people in the community 
to basically come and be the cops at that point. So isn't that just an impossible thing to solve? No, because I think that whether the, whether the officer lives there or not, if he doesn't live there, we've got to have some community conversations. We've got to have some diversity training, what we're trying to do across America. Because here's the thing, a law enforcement officer is a unique, unsung position. It's almost like going in a smoke-filled room and walking out of that room and still smelling the smoke on you. The same thing happens in law enforcement. An officer goes to, to work today. Tomorrow, if he had a bad day, he brings some of that same baggage back with him. He becomes callous in a lot of things that we do. Over the years, you become callous. You become desensitized from what's really going on. We've got to have some problems as managing our emotions under pressure, surviving the shield. Uh, having carried a shield for 30 years, I look back at myself, I'm not the same individual that entered into this profession. And we've got to have ongoing training. If you look at the situation in Chicago to show your callousness, even after the human being lay dead, the comment, I guess I'll spend X number of days sitting on the desk. What that was, that was callousness. That's disconnect. And that's what we've got to change. We've got to realize that we're dealing with individuals, human beings. We're dealing with imperfect people, imperfect situations. And we've got to start to realize that together. We've got to come together from black, white, Hispanic, all walks of life and say, let's fix this problem. Because if we don't have dialogue and the bridge keeps widening and the gap keeps getting bigger, we're going to have serious problems here in America. But where then, there's two sides of this, because... First of all, I'm a supporter of law enforcement, always have been since I was a kid. That, that, that start right there. But there are those people who tell me that we need to get rid of the bad eggs in the police department. They actually are there. Even if it's one out of a thousand, they give cops a bad name. The cops will come back and they'll answer back and they'll say, that's not the problem. The problem is we need to get rid of the criminals in the neighborhoods and we need to go after them even harder than we have before. So how do we draw this down and make some sense out of this, Bobby? You've heard both arguments. I have. Here's how we make sense out of it. Law enforcement is just a system of enforcing the law. The people that work in there are individuals. When we find out that they're not fit, just like you said, sir, there are bad people that's in every profession in our society that we have. When we recognize that you're unfit to serve or you have acted out of your scope, we need to deal with them in the manner that we deal with everything else. Remove it. If you've done wrong and you've been found wrong, we've got to approach this from a whole different way that we're approaching it. Because what's happening is people see things happening and they say, well, if I had violated or done that, the system would have responded to me differently. And I get that. So where do we begin at? We begin with training. We begin with conversation. We begin with real conversations. Do we need, though, to also have those conversations in the communities? Because as we pointed out, there are young black men and women who fear that they are just going to get stopped and they could get killed simply because they are black. How do you answer those cops, Bobby, who say, and I only got about a minute left here, who say that we've got to get to the criminal element and at the ground level of these communities, they've got to teach those people there to have respect for the cops and not commit the crimes in the first place? So we've got to go back to the root of the problem. We've got to go back and let's have this conversation as early as elementary school. I saw where Illinois is making it mandatory for anybody driving to have some type of training on how to survive or stop or how to interact with the police. I think that that's a beginning place. I think that we all need to understand that law enforcement within itself speaks a different language, just like journalists, just like any other profession. We need to understand that the people that serve and protect us, we've got to learn how to interact with them. That's what we got to do. Then at the same time, those that serve and protect us, we got to have ongoing training, sensitivity training, diversity training, conversation, tactical conversation. Uh, it's got to be an ongoing thing. Just not we're going to show support when we lose an officer. Just not we're going to come together when there's a conflict. This has to be an ongoing thing. Bobby, do me a favor. We're going to come back and we're going to do this again one time soon because it's a fascinating topic. You speak about it from experience and it needs to be looked at a whole lot deeper than just a couple of minutes of a conversation here. The book, once again, is called Surviving the Stop. Change the atmosphere, change the outcome. Bobby Kimbrough Jr. is the author, a guy who has been there. We're going to have him back again. Bobby, thanks so much for your opinions. I Thank look you, forward sir. to speaking to you again. Now, a reminder, if you watch Newsmax TV on DirecTV, we're going to Channel 366 in another week. Comcast and Time Warner, you can catch us right now on JLTV. Check your local listings. You'll find us there. Rock on, true believers. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night and good luck.